In this video, we're going to take a look at Unit 7, Lesson 6, Practice Problems. So number one says, how do the values of alpha and beta compare? So a couple of things you hopefully noticed on this picture was you saw a right angle here and you saw a right angle here. And then um, saw that this segment was marked congruent to this segment. And what that actually tells us, since we've got that 90 degree angle there, is that this is the distance from D to this side. So the distance from D to this ray is equal to the distance from D to this ray, which means that D is actually on the angle bisector, which means that alpha is equal to beta. So that's one way you could have noticed it. Another thing you could have noticed um, was you could have kind of thought about that segment as being a reflexive segment. So kind of seeing two triangles here and could have said that then this piece is congruent to itself, which then gets us that this triangle on the left is congruent to the triangle on the right by hypotenuse leg. And then that these two um, angles are corresponding parts of congruent triangles, so they're equal. So a couple different ways that you could have looked at that. Number two, triangle ABC is shown um, together with its angle bisectors. Draw a point D that's equidistant from sides AC and BC. So let me draw those on there. So AC, let me make that bigger. Oops. So here's side AC and then here's side BC. Um, so we want the point to be equidistant from those two sides. And if it's equidistant from those two sides, it means that it's on the angle bisector of it. Okay, so it would be on this angle bisector. All of these points are the same distance from these two orange lines. And then we would like for the point to actually be closer to AB. So we want it to be the same distance from the orange sides and closer to AB. So we know it needs to be on this angle bisector. And so if it's over here, it's going to be closer to these orange sides. If it's here on the in center, it's going to be equidistant from all the sides. So this is the same distance from the orange and the blue. If it's here, anywhere here, it's going to be closer to the blue. So the point needs to be on the angle bisector and it needs to be on this side of the in center. So it couldn't be here, then it would be closer to AC. So on the angle bisector, on this side of the in center will be closer to AB. Number three says in this triangle ABC, the point D is the in center, sketch the segments that represent the distance from D to the sides. So we know um, that the in center is equidistant from the sides of the triangle. And remember that distance needs to be right angles like we talked about a couple problems ago. So draw some perpendicular segments from D to each side. And we know that the in center is equidistant from those sides. So we know that all of these segments that we drew should be equal to each other. So how do these distances compare? Whoops, they should be equal. In number four, it says the triangle ABC has a circumcenter at D. So sketch the lines that intersect at the circumcenter. So a circumcenter is where all of the perpendicular bisectors of the side meet, okay? So these are gonna be perpendicular segments, but not only are they gonna be perpendicular to each side, they are also gonna be perpendicular at the midpoint. So they split these sides into equal pieces, okay? So down here, okay, this right angle, so it'll be perpendicular and it'll split this in half. So perpendicular at the midpoint, we'll also split this side in half. Um, and so the circumcenter is actually equidistant to the vertices because it's the center of the circumscribed circle. So the circle that can be drawn around the triangle and hits every vertex at the same, same time. 
So when this one says that the distance from point D to A is five, how far is it from D to C? Also five. Because connecting this point to any vertex would be a radius of that circle. So DA is five, DC is five, DB would also be five. All right, number five says the angles of a triangle um, measure 50, 40, and 90 degrees. Will its circumcenter fall inside, on, or outside the triangle? So a right triangle, the circumcenter is on the triangle. So it actually lands right on the hypotenuse. Number six, Tyler and Chiron are discussing the parallelogram in the image. Tyler says the parallelogram cannot be cyclic. Chiron says that the parallelogram can be cyclic if a circle is drawn carefully through the vertices. Do you agree with either of them? Explain or show your reasoning. So remember that for a parallelogram, opposite angles are always the same. So if this angle is 20, then this angle is 20. And for cyclic quadrilaterals, we know that the opposite angles need to add to 180. And 20 plus 20 definitely does not equal 180. So I would agree with Tyler that there is no way for this to be cyclic since the opposite angles are not going to equal 180. Number seven, find the measure of the remaining angles. So hopefully in this one, you are noticing that you have a tangent line here and remembering that a tangent um, and a radius meet at a 90 degree angle. So that angle X over there is 90 degrees. This angle over here is 90 degrees. Also, when you have this where you've got the tangents to either side, um, the central angle here and this angle on the outside will always be um, equal to 180. So 180 minus 70 would give us 110 for this one. Okay, so we can certainly just do 180 minus 70. You can also recognize that all that this is a quadrilateral and all of the angles in a quadrilateral total 360. So you could subtract both of the 90 degree angles and the 70 degree angle to get that 110 also. Which expression describes the point that partitions the segment or splits the segment AB into a one to five ratio? So let's draw segment AB here just for a visual. Whoops. Let's actually get a straight line here um, just for a visual. So we want to have um, AB split into a one to five ratio. So we want to find point C so that it splits this kind of into six parts, one part here and five parts here. So we want this point to be closer to A than it is to B. So we want most of the weight of this to be with A so that this point is closer. So when we're talking about this point C, let's call it, okay, we wanna do five sixths of point A plus one-sixth to point B. Okay, so five out of six parts so that it, the point is closer to A. So heavier weight with A so that the point is closer to A. Um, so that would be D here. Then in number nine, it asks us to write expressions that can be used to find angle C. So notice that we have a right triangle. So when we're finding angles, we can use trig and we can use inverse trig. So we could do a tangent inverse function. Tangent is opposite over um, adjacent. So the opposite is 48. The adjacent is 55. And that would equal your angle. Remember, another way to write um, tan inverse would be to write arc tan. So you can write arc instead of that negative one if you wanted to. Um, we could do a cosine function. So remember, cosine is the adjacent side, which is 55 over the hypotenuse, which is 73. That will get you the angle. 
Or we could do a sine inverse function, which is the opposite, 48 over the hypotenuse, 73.